Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. It is December, the year is finally coming to an end, and what a crazy year it has been. I was reflecting on everything that had happened this year, and throughout all the tough times, there was one really amazing thing that happened to Kokoro and Chibi and I this year. So today we wanted to tell you guys the story about Mello and just share it as sort of a reminder that there is good and hope out there in the world as we look towards the end of 2020. This happened back in February and it was a Friday evening. I was taking Kokoro and Chibi out for their evening walk. They had just had their dinner and I think I was getting ready to go to an event. I actually decided to leave my phone at home. I wanted to disconnect. So I took them out on our usual walk around the neighborhood and I made it just about two blocks over. I was on the street next to ours when the dogs were just sniffing around as usual and I turned around and there was this big stray dog standing in front of me and I looked and he didn't have a collar there was no one around, there was no leash so my first instinct was to pick up Kokoro because we've actually had a bad experience with a dog before grabbing Kokoro um, while we were on a walk so I was definitely a little nervous about that and wanted to make sure that these two were safe so I scooped Kokoro up and I had Chibi on leash in the other hand and I didn't have my phone so I thought I'm just gonna walk home and this dog was following me and he seemed really really interested in my dogs but I actually remembered seeing a story from my neighbor across the street and she had posted on Instagram the other day that there was a dog sleeping on her front porch they were out on vacation so they weren't in town and she was trying to find a way to catch the dog so they could get him to a rescue and help him out. I remembered seeing that footage and you can see here from the security cam footage that she sent me that he was sleeping on their porch day and night. He looked really skinny. You can see his ribs and his tail is tucked between his legs and he just doesn't really look to be in a good condition, sadly. As I was walking home, I put two and two together that this was that dog and I figured I'm gonna try and get him in my backyard and call the neighbors for help. So I walked back to my house and surprisingly he followed me all the way there. He was kind of whining and sounded a little scared, um, but he followed Kokoro and Chibi. He was super into them and I got him into my backyard and closed the gate so he was fully fenced in. At that point I called my neighbors and they came over and they were just so happy that I was able to put him in my backyard and now we can put a leash on him and call a rescue to help him out because apparently they had been trying to track him down for the last couple of weeks and he had been wandering in our neighborhood but every time somebody tried to get a hold of him he would bark and run away. I just felt like okay this is pretty incredible that this dog really loved Kokoro and Chibi and felt safe to follow me back into my house. So I had to leave for an event in like 30 or 45 minutes. So my other neighbors a couple doors down volunteered to take him into their backyard and call a shelter in the morning. We were like, okay, great, that's the plan. And I figured this dog was gonna be taken care of and he was gonna be fine. So I went to my event, um, we came back and I went to bed. Shortly after going to bed, I would say it was maybe midnight or one in the morning, I woke up because I heard this incessant barking. It sounded like the dog that we had picked up earlier in the day, but then I thought that can't be right because my neighbors are watching him and taking care of him. So um, the barking didn't stop. I ended up going to my backyard and opening the back door and he was sitting right there. And I guess what had happened was he jumped, he escaped out of their fenced backyard. It's fully fenced all the way around, just like mine is. He ran back over here. He scaled our six foot driveway and came into our backyard and started barking and wanted us to come outside. And I know that he scaled over our fence because the wires connecting the motor to the driveway gate were pulled out, like they had been torn out as he fell over. For some reason, he wanted to come back into our yard. And at that point, it was already pretty late. I texted my neighbors, they were asleep. So we decided to just let him stay at our place for the night. I didn't want to leave him outside because I figured he could do the same thing and run outside and maybe he could escape and then maybe in the morning he wouldn't be there. 
So we opened our door and we said, come on in, you can sleep in our living room. He just seemed like he had never been inside before. He came in really sheepishly. He like was very nervous as he walked inside. But eventually after some time, he got settled on our living room dog bed. And we were like, okay, you can just sleep there for the night. Um, I crossed my fingers and I went to bed. In the morning I got up, he was still there in the same spot. He was such a good dog. He didn't get into anything. He didn't try to pee or poo anywhere. And we just decided that we were gonna help him um, find a forever home. So the first thing we did that next day was we brought him to the vet to see if he had a chip, check his overall health condition. Um, he got into the car with us, was very scared. Again, didn't seem like he had ever been in a car before, but was a really good boy all the way throughout the whole entire vet visit. He was definitely very scared at the vet and he kind of cried the whole time we were there. <laughs> But thankfully, the vet gave him a clean bill of health. His only real issue was that he was severely underweight, but um, he didn't have a chip, he didn't have worms or parasites or anything. They did a blood test and a stool sample, and I was just really happy that he didn't have any major health issues. So we got him vaccinated, um, and we took him home, and we were like, okay, it's time to give this dog a bath because he really smells bad. Again, his first bath, he was very scared. He didn't really want to go into the shower, but didn't put up a really big fight either. Um, overall, I was just seeing that he was a very chill dog, even though it didn't seem like he had experienced a lot of things in life. He was very tolerant of these new things, and he didn't lash out, he wasn't aggressive, he wasn't reacting very much, which was a good thing. Um, he had a very calm temperament. We gave him his bath, we started feeding him some chicken and rice to get his stomach back used to eating dog food, and that dog eats a lot of food. We didn't even have a bowl big enough for him in our house because these two are so small. He was eating out of our um, stainless steel cooking bowl. Over the course of the next few days, we decided to evaluate his temperament and take some photos and videos and share him on social media to see if we could find him a new home. One of the things I really wanted to do was capture his lovable, funny personality and share it on my stories because a lot of the times when you're adopting a dog from a rescue, you see some photos, maybe a paragraph written about their personality, but it doesn't really get across the true personality of the dog unless you can see a video or multiple videos of him. I was taking these videos of him cuddling with Kokoro and Chibi because it really was how they got along. He would just follow what they were doing. They did an amazing job sort of helping teach him our boundaries in our house. He would also do this thing where he would get on his back. He would do the Chibi things with Chibi and roll around and then growl and wag his tail. And it just really showed off what a happy, happy dog he was deep down. Thankfully, we got a lot of inquiries on him. People started coming over and meeting him and seeing how he interacted with Kokoro and Chibi in our backyard. We were able to find him his forever home in just about a week, which was amazing. I was really careful to evaluate how he did with other dogs. He played very, very well with Kokoro, but she is definitely a small dog and she gets scared of a big, lean dog with no fluff and just muscle barreling towards her. The weirdest kind of part about it was that he was such a good dog. He was so well behaved. He knew how to sit. He didn't mark or pee or poop inside the house yet it didn't seem like he had ever been inside before. Um, when he first came into our house, he was very nervous. He didn't seem to know what a dog bed was until I showed him to lay on it. Thankfully, he was a quick learner and he adjusted to life with Kokoro and Chibi here with us and we were able to help find him a home very quickly. One of the things that his new owners wanted to do was bring him to their dog-friendly office. So the next day, I brought him with me to work just to test out how he would do in that type of environment and he passed with flying colors. He was playing with the other dogs, really, really great. 
he was leashed up at my desk the whole day and was fine. We played ball and fetch down the hallway in the kitchen and he just did so great meeting everyone, all these people that he didn't know and dogs that he didn't know. So I was really happy that this was going to be a new chapter of life for him. On his last day with us, he played extra hard with Kokoro and Chibi before his new parents came to pick him up and it was just so heartwarming to see. Kokoro took to him right away and she's definitely a more standoffish dog. Typically you need to earn Kokoro's love and trust and it was just nice to see that she had accepted him and welcomed him into our home so quickly and it was almost like he knew that it was the last day of his time with us and it was really really sad and hard for us to let him go after everything that we had gone through after him following me back and jumping back into our yard but we just knew that he was going to have a better life with these two new parents who are going to be able to dedicate their full attention and time and love to him. So he went to his forever home. His owners decided to name him Mellow because of his mellow personality. And now he is living the life. He um, put on all the weight that he needed to gain. He is a big boy, very, very lean, happy boy. And he gets to play with all of his dog cousins. He's taken some road trips, he is a big couch potato, and I've heard he is a Bears fan. Even though it was sad to have to let him go, I couldn't be happier at how the story turned out for Mello, and I'm just so grateful that there are human beings out there who would open their homes to a dog in need. Um, I mean, just looking at the pictures of him from before when my neighbors were trying to catch him to now, it's just such an amazing transformation. I'm so grateful that he came into our lives when he did. So yeah, that's the story of Mello. I hope you guys enjoyed and just wanted to send a little reminder to you all that there is good out in the world. Good things can happen as we close out 2020. It is really important to remember that and hopefully we can reunite with Mello soon or share a follow-up story with you all. Um, but until then, thank you guys for watching and we will see you next time.